Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. And today we are going to talk about OS or out of a specification. Now this is undoubtedly one of the highly discussed topic in the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, I will try to explain this entire topic in less than 10 minutes. So let us begin our talk with the very first point that is history. In the 1993, the Bar Laboratories has sued US FDA for ad hoc drug regulations. And what was the case? Actually, US FDA was not accepting the practices followed by the Bar Laboratories during the management or handling of out of specification result. So what was the practice followed by Bar Lab? And it is here. So if there is a out of specification result, Bar Lab used to conduct testing for the same sample for two more times. So there will be three results available. Maybe the first out of specification result and now the two more generated are the retesting result. So Bar Lab used to select two base results out of these three results. That means in case if the both the retesting results are meeting the specification, Bar Lab is to release the batch. But US FDA had a concern about this particular approach. US FDA said that this is not a scientific approach and there was no any reference provided by the Bar Labs. And because of that, the Bar Lab has sued US FDA for saying it is a ad hoc drug regulations. And in fact, there was no any guidance document available to be referred on how one can handle the out of the specification result. So out of that, the court, you know, asked US FDA to publish a guideline on OS. And that's where the US FDA published OS guidelines in the 1998. Now, according to the guideline, and uh, if you look into the US FDA's uh, guidance document on OS, you will find phase one, phase two, and phase three. But as such, the purpose of phase one is just to confirm the accuracy of the analytical result or to understand whether the lab data is accurate or not. That is the purpose of the phase one. Again, uh, the phase 1A and phase 1B, though it is not part of the US FDA's guidance document, but it is very much part of the guidance document. EMA has segregated this uh, phase 1 into phase 1A and phase 1B. I would like to emphasize on this particular approach. So what is the intention of having a phase 1A? Hmm? The phase 1A is to determine if there is any obvious error associated with the reported out of the spec. And obvious error means what? The errors which has the direct detectable evidences. For example, the wrong peak integration for an chromatographic analysis. Or different instrument parameters for any instrumental analysis. Dilution errors, weighing errors. This can be attributed very easily. I mean, this can be verified very easily because there is a direct evidence available and they fall under obvious error. That is phase 1A is made to detect and identify such kind of error. In case uh, if the outcome is that the okay, now there is an obvious error or obvious error is identified. In that case, the quality control department can take the corrections, corrective and preventive actions as it's required and the OS can be closed by saying that the result identified by the testing lab was invalid and batch can be released. But in case if there is no obvious error identified, I mean the error which has no direct or detectable evidences, in that case the quality control lab has to initiate phase 1B investigation. So what is the purpose of conducting phase 1B investigation? That is to determine assignable cause. Now what is mean by assignable cause? Now these are the errors or the cause which do not have the direct and detectable evidences. This cause may be a little deeper inside the carpet and to identify that cause, the quality control unit may have to conduct certain amount of hypothesis. Now what is the purpose of conducting hypothesis? The hypothesis will help 
quality control unit to either discount or confirm the root cause. In case if you say, oh, filtration is the probable root cause. Now, this is the hypothesis you have made. So, as a part of your experimentation, you are going to confirm or either discount whether the filtration is really root cause or not. So, what is the outcome of your phase 1b investigation? Let us say that there is an assignable cause identified. That means this uh, out of specification result can be attributed to analytical error. There is a measurement aberration noted and hence you can certainly take the appropriate corrections, corrective actions and preventive actions and followed by you can release the batch. But in case if there is no assignable cause identified, in that situation you have to go to the phase 2 investigation. Now what is the purpose of phase 2 investigation? This is also called as the full scale investigation. Now this is the kind of investigation where not only quality control but also manufacturing and if required vendor can also be part of the team team of the investigation so the manufacturing department has to also investigate whether there is something wrong happened during the manufacturing of this particular batch now what is the possible outcome the possible outcome is manufacturing deficiency observed in that case you have to state for reject the batch and correct take the corrective actions and the preventive actions but in case if there is no manufacturing error or deficiency observed now this is a very critical situation you are saying that probably there is no laboratory error and now there is no manufacturing error in that situation guideline proposed to go for the additional testing now additional testing is a very important point and need to be understood very clearly. In the additional testing, you can actually conduct the retesting for the same batch by two different analysts, preferably by original analyst, means who has reported the OS and the second equivalent analyst. Now who can begin the additional testing? The second analyst can actually begin the additional testing. So, for example, let us say second analyst has is going to conduct four retesting. So, four preparations will be made and if all results are passing. Now, in this situation, original analyst has reported the failing result. But the second equivalent analyst has reported the passing result. In that situation, original analyst can conduct the retest analysis. Isn't it? Because we said that two analysts can be the part of additional testing. But in case if one or more results are out of the spec, right? One or more results are out of the spec, tested by the second analyst. In that case, second an the analysis by original analysis is not required. Okay, let me correct this. Analysis by original analyst is not needed and batch can be rejected based on based on to the product history or in case if there is only OOT observed or if the product history has a lot money OS or customer complaints the QA can take a decision on rejecting the batch. But in case if the all results passes for the second analyst then you have to go for the original analyst. So original analyst to conduct retesting, for example, two more preparations. If all results by original analyst is passing, the batch can be released. Now, this is a situation where already the second analyst has the passing result. And if the retesting done by the original analyst is also meeting the spec, the batch can be released. However, in case if the one or more results are not meeting the spec, in that situation, you may have to reject the batch. Let us now talk about the, the last phase, that is the phase 3. So phase 3 is the last part of the OS investigation. And in the phase 3, there is no experimentation going to be conducted. But you are going to review the complete investigation done by manufacturing team and the analytical or the quality control uh, team. So based on to the complete investigation, the phase 3 is going to conclude the outcome of the entire investigation. Decision has to be made on the batch disposition. Now in case of uh, you take a decision of rejecting the batch and uh, in case if the root cause is not identified, 
in that case guideline says that there is no restriction on further investigation to identify the root cause now if you conduct some root cause which says that oh there is a analytical error and batch cannot be released a batch cannot be now disposed now this is a very critical point the decision to reject cannot be reversed as a result of further testing you cannot change your further decision just based on to the investigation conducted beyond phase 3 i hope you understand this different uh, stages of lab uh, investigation manufacturing investigation to be done during os we talked about history we talked about different phases of investigation we talked about the additional lab testing in case if you want to understand this os in much more detail i am conducting an online session on this coming sunday i am giving the registration link for this workshop in the description please click on the link and join me on sunday for the detailed discussion on os in case if you need this mind map give the information as per the link given in the description and i will drop you an email with the required information thank you so much